Hi, typically you want to avoid placing unnecessary load on a backend services by only sending valid requests to those services. To prevent invalid requests from being sent to backend services, you can use an API gateway to validate incoming requests against the validation request policy. My name is Babur, I am a developer advocate. In this video, we will find out how to prevent invalid requests from being sent to backend services by validating incoming requests against request validation policy with Apache API 6 API Gateway. Request validation is used to ensure that incoming request message is properly formatted and contains the proper attributes. API Gateway can perform the basic and complex request validation so that you can focus on the app specific validation in the backend. If a request doesn't meet the validation policy requirements, you can configure API Gateway to reject the request instead of passing it through to the targeted backend service. Using API Gateway, you can set up validation request policies to check the following. If the request includes specific headers, or if it includes a specific query parameters, or request body should match a specific JSON content type. There are many benefits of validating requests within the API Gateway. Performance optimization is one of them because invalid requests are rejected early in the process. This can significantly reduce the load on your application servers. Also, it offers centralized validation. Having this centralized point for request validation obviously simplifies the management and reduces the application of the same validation logic across multiple services or applications. Next, but the most important one is security. By enforcing validation rules at the API Gateway level, you can prevent all sorts of uh, malicious attacks from ever reaching your backend application. For example, our request may contain a purchase request sent from a client application. A client application can be mobile, web, or desktop to the payment service through the API 6 API Gateway. And valid request body will look like this. We will have UID, item, quantity, and the price. First thing we need to convert this JSON into JSON request schema by using uh, different tools. There are a lot of tools available. You can prepare from JSON, JSON request schema, something like this. And the next step, we're going to convert this JSON schema into request validation plugin for configuration and the YAML configuration or JSON configuration. Let's see how to enable API 6 request validation plugin in practice. To do so, you need to use your favorite editor, in my case VS Code. You will start with creating a new folder and inside the folder you will create a YAML file called Docker Compose. Because we are going to use this Docker Compose to bring two containers inside the Docker Compose. As you can see, we are deploying API 6 in a standalone mode, which means without etcd storage. And then we are bringing HTTP bin as a mock API to revalidate our requests. Or it can be in reality your backend service, you know, if you're working in a real project. For simplicity, we are using for the demo case. And Docker Compose file sets everything you here we describe it, uh, like API 6 and HTTP bin. To run API 6 in standalone mode, we need to define config.yaml file and we need to choose deployment type of data plane and all these data plane configuration will be taken from static yaml file in our case api 6.yaml you are going to see soon and we are specifying that we are going to use single plugin called request validation and our api 6.yaml file looks like this we are configuring a request validation inside the route so we are creating a single route that with a uri a slash anything slash and every request coming to this uri will be forwarded by the route to our sample backend service just a http bin which is running on port 80 and we are enabling for this route the request validation plugin and we are providing json object schema as we defined it previously and we are defining some rules and required parameters and properties 
for UID, which means UID should be integer, and we are specifying the item. Item can be only three types of item, sticker, t-shirt, and pin, or and so on. And we also specify the quantity uh, like this. A quantity can be an integer number, maximum and minimum values, and which the prices. And each time, uh, we if we change anything in api6.yaml file, it will be automatically fetched by the API 6 and you don't have to worry about stopping your service and rerunning it. That's how the hot reloading of the plugins works. Once everything is configured, let's just start to run our simple application by doing docker compose up and it will run two containers as we expected. Now let's test this configuration. We can send request to create a route. We can first try a request with invalid uh, request body. I'm going to use a coral command to achieve that, or you can use a postman or similar tools if you prefer to use any UI friendly request uh, sending. Uh, here we are requesting the same route uh, called uh, anything, and we are sending out this as a body of the request some items values. If I press an enter, as you can see, since uh, we don't have the item uh, called hoodie, uh, it failed against validation. Because as you can see, we have only accepted item sticker, t-shirt and pin. In this case, uh, API 6, before forwarding the request to the HTTP bin, which is backend service, it is validating on its side and immediately returning a 400 uh, error to the client uh, by saying that item validation failed because it doesn't match the enum values we define it in our validation request policy now if you try to send a valid request we'll get back the response from http bin because uh, it now works as we expected and then validation rules are checked and it was successful and the requests are forwarded to the backend service. What we have seen so far only includes some basic validation but API 6 has much more capabilities. You can also configure schema for validating headers or set some custom uh, HTTP code rejection for the rejection one and also maybe assign some uh, custom message uh, why our request is being rejected. We can even validate strings using the regular expressions. 